G'day Internet, welcome back to another video. This is my Commodore 128D, and it's a mighty fine looking machine. Unfortunately it suffers from a similar affliction that many 128Ds suffer from, known as Missing Keyboard Syndrome. However, this week I managed to pick one up. Um, but it's not all fun and games. This is the one I got right here. And in a previous life, some monster cut the cable off it. But we have the technology and we can fix it. So here's our keyboard. And as you can see, someone has decided to hack the cable off the end of it. Now, you would just assume, well, it's just a matter of soldering a cable in, which is kind of true, but with a 128D, it's a little bit more complicated or there's a bit more involved. So let me give you the 50 cent tour roughly of how a keyboard works. Right. A keyboard across all its keys basically works as a matrix. We have a series of lines like this, this, and each one of these intersections is a key. So A, B, C, D, or QWERTY, whatever, okay? And the way it essentially works is each of these lines runs back to some kind of encoding chip, or an E, like this, right? This does all the decoding of the matrix, and then this goes off to the keyboard controller, KBC, here, and what you're looking, physically, what you're looking at here is this is all in the keyboard and this is all in the computer. Uh, and this here, this is your keyboard cable. But on a 128D, it's a little different. Because the 128D is essentially based on, the, still on the Commodore 64, we still have our matrix, okay? with all our intersections for our key presses. However, all of these in a Commodore 64 run to one of the CIA chips, okay? And it's as simple as that. Now, in something like a Commodore 64 where it's an all-in-one unit, and if you've ever pulled one apart, you know that there's a plug that goes from the keyboard to the main board, which has got like 20 odd wires on it. And in an all-in-one computer, that works fine. The problem is, is what happens when this is the computer and this is the keyboard? Well, Commodore didn't try and fix this arrangement whatsoever. And the cable that runs between the keyboard and the computer contains 25 wires. So I had to go out and find a 25 core cable. Now, you might think that's pretty simple. You know, grab a 25 pin serial cable. And that's exactly what I did. I found one. I found one buried in an old bucket of cables at work. Um, I've already hacked one end off to make sure I wasn't going insane. Now, the surprising thing about this is that even most 25 pin serial cables usually only have the, what is it, eight or nine wires that a normal nine pin serial cable has. So I was lucky to find this, and this is 25 cores uh, and some shielding. So this will work perfectly as our new keyboard cable. Now at the other end of this keyboard cable should be a 25 pin connector. And that's exactly what it is. It's a standard DB 25 pin uh, plug and that goes into the side of the computer. However, that looks kind of ugly and you can probably tell that that doesn't quite look right and that's correct. So I jumped on Thingiverse and found a 90 degree shell for a 20, 25 pin uh, DIN connect, uh, so a DB25 connector. So that's going to become the end of our cable and that will go into the side of the computer. So let's start by stripping down the keyboard and getting to where the cable solders into. Look, I'm even using a container this time. Look at me all coming up in the world. Like I know what I'm doing. Uh, 
Right, so that should just lift off, and it does. And there's a few more screws to get the actual keyboard out. Right, with the keyboard free of its uh, case, we now have to remove this metal back panel and all these tiny little screws. Right, we can now get rid of the actual keyboard. And we now get to just remove these last screws. And we have our circuit board. So first step is going to be to remove the old cable. So let me heat up the soldering iron and the desoldering gun. And we'll get started on that. Right, with the cable now removed, what I want to do is use this as a bit of a guide in regards to how far back I need to strip this. So, because I don't want too much cable in there, but I'm thinking about there. Okay, we have our 25 wires. Now I get to strip 25 tips of wires. Woo. Right, with that all tinned, we now need to connect it to the circuit board, which actually isn't as easy as it sounds because you kind of have to like hold it and you have 25 wires to deal with. So this should be interesting. So that's all the wires soldered in. It wasn't a fun job, but it's done. Uh, I've thrown the zip tie back in, uh, basically just to, because I'm gonna be playing around with this cable, I don't want it to pull out and pull on wires. So that end is now done. We now get to the other end of the cable. Um, what I have done is I've scribbled down my color codes for wires 1 to 25 uh, and I've split off um, the first what is it 13 of them which is the top row of the DB25 plug but here's the thing this is the plug and the shell I've already re I've already tinned the tips um, we don't have huge amounts of room to play with in regards to loose bits of wire so that's going to have to sit in there like that. And that's a lot of wire to kind of jam in there. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to be very careful with my wire lengths uh, and use as least as possible, but still keep this roughly where it needs to be, but on my desk. So to do that, I'm going to use a bit of blue tack. And I'm going to secure something in there. I'm going to secure this here like this, so I know exactly where I need to be. I know that this is taking it from the wire 
on the cable coming in from this direction and I know that it needs to sit about there so that's going to be my judgment for wire length obviously I'm going to build in a little bit of slack um, but we'll go from there now these are my wires 1 through to 25 now because we're soldering on the male side of the DB25 plug luckily Commodore decided to keep the wires in a fairly logical order they are literally 1 to 25 um, but for us soldering on this side this is pin 1 here so we go 1 to 13 and we'll take care of the other side in a minute so this is going to be a case of one wire at a time trimming the end soldering it on wash rinse repeat 25 times so I'm looking forward to that Right, that is the entire plug now soldered up and at least visually inspected and it looks okay. Uh, the next job is to put the keyboard somewhat back together so I can test it uh, and before we wrap everything up, plug it into the 128 and um, see if I've screwed it up or not. Right, so I've put the keyboard back together as much as it needs to be and plugged it gingerly in the side because the uh, shell isn't on the plug yet. So, let's see if this actually works. Right. This is a keyboard. It works, it works. Uh, good, because the whole time I was doing this, I was constantly thinking, am I wiring this up backwards? Have I got the right pin out that I found randomly online? Turns out I did. So let me kind of pack all this up and put it all back together properly, um, and we'll give it a good test run. And there we go. It's all back together, and I finally have a complete working Commodore 128D, and I'm really happy about it, because this, this just looks good really good together. I have a bit of a thing about having computers kind of complete, if you know what I mean. Uh, so for instance, uh, my Breadbin C64, I've got a 1702 uh, monitor for it, which kind of completes it. I'm still missing an original 1541 drive for it, which is a bit disappointing, but I'll get to that eventually. Um, but for this, it's all up and running, and I'm really, really happy, and I'm stoked that I, well, didn't screw up the uh, cable uh, for the keyboard uh, and the information that I did find online that I was going by was correct. Um, so this is all together. I'm going to play some Strider 2 now, which is a terrible game, uh, but it turns out that all my Commodore 64 software is at work, uh, as long as, as well as my SD to IEC. So, and it being a long weekend, I'm not going into work if I don't have to, so I'm going to play a bit of this. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.